Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I am Dr. Stephanie Shuttler, AKA the Fancy Scientist, and today I am evaluating Big Cat Rescue, the sanctuary scene in uh, Tiger King on Netflix. I got Leo with me, my little tiger, and we are just gonna jump into it. Now, this video is only about the sanctuary. I am only talking about the conservation value, the education value, and animal welfare standards of the sanctuary. How am I qualified to talk about this? I've been a wildlife biologist since 2003. I have my PhD. I studied um, elephants, not big cats. Um, but I do work in India. We have camera trap programs in India. So I'm familiar with the conservation issues that wild tigers face. I have also worked at a zoo and a museum that is accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So I understand what goes into the conservation of captive animals. So I've been in a couple of Facebook groups on Tiger King and one of my biggest pet peeves is people saying that the Big Cat Rescue is just as bad as the zoos seen in Tiger King. Now, I watched Tiger King completely without bias. I did not know of Big Cat Rescue. I did not know of Carol Baskins. Um, I actually had heard of Joe Exotic before, and I know, of course, about the cub petting industry. Um, there are good sanctuaries and bad sanctuaries, and my last video alludes to um, some of the, the factors in bad sanctuaries, and there's even phony sanctuaries as well. So it is quite possible that Big Cat Rescue could be an awful sham sanctuary. I went into this, I looked them up on the internet, I um, also took all the information from the Netflix show, I listened to the Wondery podcast, and I came up to my conclusion that it is a big resounding no. Big Cat Rescue is not nearly, not even close, nowhere even in the same um, playing field as the zoos featured in the Netflix documentary. And now I'm going to explain to you why. The first thing that is really clear right off the bat is that Big Cat Rescue does not breed their animals. And this is huge because there are currently too many captive uh, tigers in the United States who have really crappy homes and that's why we need sanctuaries. Check out my last video if you didn't see it about why we need sanctuaries. Big Cat Rescue, therefore, is helping to solve the problem. They are not contributing to the problem. I totally understand that Carol used to breed these big cats. We all make mistakes in our past and we all learn. I used, to, I rode an elephant when I was little. Now I make blog posts about not riding elephants. So people learn from their past. A lot of people say that Carol is using Big Cat Rescue to make money. And this is strange for a couple of things. First of all, um, Big Cat Rescue is a nonprofit, so they have to disclose a lot of um, information or you can find their information. They actually put all of their information on their website, like their IRS forms. And you can see exactly where they spend their money. Carol's salary is a little over $60,000 a year, which is by no means um, a lot to make money. If she wanted to make money, she could easily just call it a sanctuary and breed the cats and do exactly what Joe is doing. She is working with PETA. PETA is fundamentally against like keeping captive exotic animals and they want an end to it. So although PETA supports sanctuaries, they want to see sanctuaries no longer exist in the future because there is no more private ownership of these animals and therefore no more breeding of them. So Carol and PETA work on these issues together to stop the big cat breeding in the United States. So if Carol was making money off the sanctuary, this is not legislation that she would want to pursue because all of her cats, or most of her cats, um, come from private ownership. Um, I did see that one of her cats came from an AZA accredited zoo. So theoretically, if she's using this to make money, it doesn't make any sense for her to want to pursue such legislation. And if you look at their, um, their reports, their end of the year reports, they spend so much time, energy, and money 
on this legislation. In fact, in the Netflix documentary, Carol says that you, she believes you can change just one thing and this is her one thing. Okay, let's talk about conservation. Does Big Cat Rescue help conservation? Now, Carol really didn't focus too much on conservation. It was mostly the other zoos who threw around the word conservation, but I am going to address it here. Big Cat Rescue does donate to conservation programs around the world that involve bigger and smaller cats. Um, these are legit programs. I recognize at least several of the programs. I know one person working in the program. So last year, 2019, they donated, I think it was hundred, yeah, $136,000 to conservation programs. So that is a wonderful thing because this funds scientists like myself to be able to research animals like these. Um, it also provides on the ground protection for a lot of these animals. Anti poaching patrols are huge in general. So, this is some really great conservation work that they're doing. In addition to funding wildcat research and conservation programs, they also rehabilitate bobcats when possible. Bobcats are an animal uh, native to Florida, they are found widely all over the United States and they will be called um, to take in an injured bobcat, say one got hit by a car, and they will, they will rehabilitate it and then release it back to the wild. Now, this is definitely an amazing thing, a really nice, kind-hearted thing to, thing to do, but in the context of conservation, this is not necessarily making a dent. Bobcats are a really common animal, um, so releasing injured ones into the wild isn't going to do much for their conservation because they're a least concerned species um, uh, conservation wise. So theoretically, Big Cat Rescue can help conservation along with other sanctuaries by acting as ambassador animals. These are animals that people see and they become inspired to help protect their, the species in the wild. It's not quite clear um, if this is actually happening at Big Rescue or other sanctuaries. It would have to happen sanctuary by sanctuary. We'd have to look at it, each one individually. Um, and it's hard to assess, just looking online, how strong those conservation messages are. My impression is that Carol really focuses on getting the big cat breeding stopped in the United States. And that's really what her educational message is. That being said, say that the tigers do help convey that message of conservation and people leave Big Cat Sanctuary and they're like, I really wanna to donate to tiger conservation in the wild. One of the things that can be argued for the sanctuary is that maybe they should have fewer animals and then take the extra money that it would that would um, that they would save from feeding those additional animals and use that money to support conservation efforts in the wild. Um, so, and this re this means that you would have to euthanize healthy animals. Um, and this is really before I looked into how many tigers that Carol had. Um, the Netflix documentary kind of gives you the impression that maybe she has like hundreds of tigers or over 100 tiger. So if it costs $10,000 to feed one big cat and you have hundreds of tigers, wouldn't it be better to reduce the amount of captive big tigers you have in a sanctuary and use that extra money to conserve wild animals? But Big Cat Rescue only has 10 tigers. So it's really, it's not that many. Um, but you still could argue if you had fewer tigers, the tigers that, sur that you let live had more space, you would use that extra money to fund conservation programs in the wild. Now, I know this sounds cruel, I know this sounds awful, but um, I mean, these are the decisions that we have to make. Conservation, nonprofits, sanctuaries, they are all pressed for money and they're all competing for donations from the public to support their programs. So it's about, it's really just about like which animals do you want to help save? Now let's go into education. I talked a little bit about how Big Cat Rescue can help conservation efforts. They offer tours at their facilities, so they're educating the public in that way. Um, but it looks like they also have teacher programs from their website. In 2019, they talked to 27 schools and they have virtual platforms as well. Again, this is fantastic. It's really great, especially to educate um, children because children are more receptive to conservation messages and if they have experiences with nature when they're young, they're more likely to develop pro-conservation attitudes and behaviors over time. 
Um, that being said, I don't know how much the programs focus on the big cats or conservation and how much they focus on stopping the, um, the captive tiger breeding in the United States. But I think both are important messages. I am definitely against the the private breeding. I am in support of the legislation that that Carol is pursuing um, because these cub, cub petting operations are really just exploiting the animals for money. Now let's get into animal welfare. And this is probably the biggest thing that people are confused by. Aren't the cages small? Aren't the cages the same as Joe's? And in the Netflix series, you see this picture of Carol and there's a lion in the background and it looks like the lion is in a small cage. There's another point in the documentary where Joe is talking about, um, it's either a lynx or a bobcat. He actually calls it a mountain lion, it's not. Um, and he shows it in a small cage in his video. These are not the whole cages, people. <laughs> These are called blackout cages. So if you have a gigantic enclosure of three acres, and you have tigers living in it, which is what Carol has, how are you going to clean that enclosure? Or say a tiger is sick or something. So what they do is they feed these animals in these little lockout cages. So they get the animals used to going to these cages that are open to the bigger enclosure. As they close the door and the tiger is in that small cage temporarily and the keepers have access to that larger area. They can also use it in the reverse way, whereas when the tigers are in the larger enclosures, they can shut the door in between the large cage and the small cage, and then the keepers can go in there and change their water, give them food. They don't have to worry about interacting with tigers. Um, and so this is much safer for the animals, much safer for the people, as opposed to in the zoos featured in the Netflix series where people just like went inside tiger cages. Um, although there was the one, um, person who got their hand um, ripped off. Um, they didn't go inside, but still. Anyway, so these are not where the animals spend most of their time. And I assume for that picture, they probably put the lion in the lockout cage or it was during feeding time so they could get a nice picture of Carol with the lion. But these are not the cages that these animals live in most of the time. Big Cat Rescue seems to do fine with their enclosures. Um, they have enclosures from 1,200 feet to about two and a half acres, depending on the animal size. This is above a uh, standard set by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So if you feel that these enclos enclosures are small, you really gotta fight for the AZA to increase their standards. At one point, Joe brought up the fact that the cages were rusted. Um, if they were, I don't know. I don't think this is, I don't think that's that big of a deal. But um, I looked at the, the pictures of the enclosures closely and it's just the paint that they have, that's that rust color. Um, so I don't know, maybe at the time they rusted, but they're not rusted now. Big Cat Rescue does allow visitors and visitors can potentially stress out the animals. Um, like for example, the, the elephant sanctuary in Tennessee, they want to retire their elephants who a lot of them were um, performing elephants. They were in circuses, they were using elephant rides. They want to retire them completely so they, they don't even open their sanctuary to the public. Big Cat Rescue does. and. They probably do this to educate the public and also get money. And that money is, is spent um, at least partially in conservation efforts for those animals in the wild. I don't know if they have enough people to really stress the animals out, but they definitely have barriers between the people and the animals. And the animals look like they have enough space to hide if they don't want to be seen. Um, so. I don't see a big problem with this. It's, it's no different than an ethical zoo. So again, if you have a problem with this and you just need to be against all exotic animals in captivity, period, which I understand people have that opinion. And it's a, it's a very, very difficult subject matter because if you go to my first video in the series where I talk about um, zoos and the importance of zoos and conservation and education, they do really have important roles. And you have to balance that with the animal welfare. Like, is it right to keep an animal like a tiger in a cage or an elephant or a chimpanzee? These animals are really social and really intelligent. I also looked online for animal abuses at Big Cat Rescue. I visited the website Big Cat Rescue Watch, um, which I think is 
um, associated with Joe Exotic, but I gave it a credible look. Most of them did not seem like a big deal at all. For example, the first one was, I think a serval um, had a broken leg and they just, they just found the serval with a broken leg one day. Well, I mean, it's a wild animal. Like my dog, who's a domesticated animal and lives with us, uh, she's not even living outside all the time. One day she just started limping because she had, she did something to her shoulder. We told the vet, you know, we had her checked up. We don't know what she did or how it happened, but that doesn't make us animal abusers. So I thought that was a ridiculous claim. They had a couple of incidents where Big Cat Rescue was doing Facebook Lives. It looks like they were transferring the animals between um, enclosures and they poked the animals a couple of times. Um, it did not look that bad at all. Um, and if you look at the footage in the Netflix documentary of Joe, Jeff, and um, Doc handling their animals, I mean, that's like a million times worse. Just a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. Um, they talked about the use of volunteers in the documentary that, that Big Cat Rescue has, um, I think, hundreds of volunteers. That is not uncommon. Whether you agree that it's um, right or wrong is kind of a separate issue, but that does not give me any red flags because that is extremely common within the world of um, wildlife work in general. Um, our, our field is so poorly paid um, internships that I took, that I took on in 2005, one that I did abroad, I essentially made no money the whole entire year. I would, I did this in Kenya. I made a Kenyan salary, which was, um, you know, a lot lower than United States salary. And then I had to pay for half of my airfare to go there. So I essentially made no money. It was like a volunteer position. Now, oh my gosh, if you want to volunteer to do something in Kenya or in another area around the world, a lot of times they make the volunteers pay. You have to pay to cover your room and board, um, your food costs, which is room and board, um, your airfare. So although a lot of people think this is taking advantage of younger people, um, and you can definitely argue that it is, it is not uncommon because there's not a lot of money in this at all. There is not a lot of money in nonprofit work and conservation work and wildlife sanctuaries. So if you have people who are willing to donate their time, then that's what they do. They, they accept the donations of that time to keep the sanctuary or whatever facility we're talking about running. And then finally, the last thing about this, I looked to see who is paid staff. She doesn't have any keepers or veterinarians. Um, I'm not sure how common that is for sanctuaries. Maybe she doesn't have a head keeper because she has so much experience working with cats that she's kind of like the head keeper. Um, so I did think that was a little bit strange, but um, again, I'm not sure how normal this is in the world of sanctuaries and it's not enough for me to raise gigantic red flags. So all in all, my professional opinion is that Big Cat Rescue is a legit sanctuary. I couldn't find any major problems with it. It's definitely not a sham and it's not a crappy sanctuary. Um, I think they are doing a good job of taking care of animals for the rest of their lives. Feel free to comment, feel free to let me have it if you disagree with me. I have dealt with so many negative comments on my Facebook posts, even though I'm really nice and really polite to everyone, so I can handle it. If you want to hear what I think of the Greater Winniewood Zoo, uh, Myrtle Beach Safari, then make sure you subscribe because I'm going to have videos out on those soon.